start with your savings. If the savings are inadequate, maybe you can pull resources and form a team so that you can accumulate adequate resources. So in short, do not access credit initially. Start with your own. Build a track record. And then maybe you can borrow for working capital needs only. Being a manufacturer to many is a domain of the rich. But the experience of Musimenta Bakaine, the proprietor of Margarita Industries, conveys a totally different story. A former civil servant, he retired young to pursue his dream, being a manufacturer. After leaving government, I started consulting in water supply. So my client was mostly government. I have designed water supplies all over the country, in Kapchorwa, in Kitugu, Madiopei, down in Kisoro. So I have moved all over the whole country. Now, when I got some money from these services, I had to, I, can, I could choose to build apartments or do something else. I chose to do something which my family can participate in. So first, I started with making of candles. Uh, within two years, uh, we are not the ones who caused the problem, but when we started the candles, a lot of shading was at, at its peak. So, and at its peak, we made a, a lot of gains. And uh, our cash flow with the bank was very good. So we, could, we were able to access credit. We leased machinery from the bank, and we bought this machine that you see here. So as we went on, there was competition. There was a need to produce other products. For example, we were making the preforms only. Now we had to make the closure. So we had to again borrow more money to make the closure. Then we had to also, we said now, we have a few, a few competitors who are doing um, the, 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 what we are doing. Let us run away from them. Based on our cash flows, we again went to the bank and we were able to acquire other machinery to make pots bottles and uh, blown bottles for packaging of juice and alcoholic beverages. Yeah, so that's how the sources have been mobilized. But what pushed him into this particular business? First of all, I noticed that in Uganda, we were importing most of the plastics. And in particular, uh, the plastics used for packaging of beverages were in very short supply and they were being imported. Uh, there was a lot of uh, working capital requirements yes. on the SMEs yes. who are the ones involved in packaging water, alcoholic beverages, fruit juices and other agro processed products like honey. Now, for small SMEs who are making honey in somewhere in Arua, it's expensive for them to import a full container of products from the Middle East. So I saw that as an opportunity. I said, well, we can, I can make what they call the preform here and also blow it such that the small SMEs can come and buy and then go and package. Going into a particular line of business sometimes does not come naturally, as some people think. Musimenta's engineering background was good leverage for him. I, I have my first degree in mechanical engineering and a master's degree in, in sanitary engineering which I got from, from Europe. Uh, I have always had interest in machinery, right from my early years. That's why I chose mechanical engineering. Uh, I started off as a, a civil servant. I resigned after 10 years, started uh, consulting in water supply, made some savings, went into making of candles, which is a, a cottage industry at this very same premises. And then I kept improving and went into plastics later. So it's not only that my training is mechanical engineering that, that makes me be an engineer, but it's an added, added advantage in that machines are not strange to me. I understand the processes much easier. And I would actually encourage people who are mechanical engineers out there to, to pursue the same, to see what they can do, what they can convert from so any product, value, value addition to agro-processing or packaging or manufacturing using foreign inputs, 
it, would, it is much easier for a person with a science background. A key principle that Bakaina says has helped him a lot into getting a footing in what is presumed to be a big boy's world of manufacturing is commitment to fight any self pity temptations. Yes, it's very interesting in that uh, you blame yourself for many things. But uh, uh, what happens is that you have to work hard. Uh, the sky is the limit. There is no, there's no ceiling over your head. So the harder you work, the more you think, the more innovative you become, then the more you are able to capture the market. And uh, uh, maybe at least have substantial income that is uh, good for you and for the family and also for the future. Because here you have a future that you can, that you can always keep improving on year by year. Relatedly, Bakaini's journey in manufacturing has been helped by his commitment to quality, which he says should be upheld at all times. When I say quality, it's not only the products that you make, it's also the process. You should buy quality machinery. So if you buy quality machinery, you can produce quality products. Then also, it is value for money in that you have the equipment for a much longer time. So you are able to have extract more money out of an, a piece of equipment that has got good quality. A manufacturer, Bakina says he has a multitude of interests to serve and reconcile and for this matter, integrity comes high on his list of qualities. We deal with importers of raw materials, we deal with uh, our customers or our other wholesalers because for us we have said to concentrate on production rather than doing, going into, delving into many areas. So the people who are on the other side supplying the raw materials, oftentimes they trust you and give you credits. So you should be able to pay back. Then also your customers, sometimes they can pay you up front. You should be able to deliver. And in case the quality is not good, you should be able to explain and be able to replace such that people see you as a person who is interested in their businesses on the supply side and on the side that which you are, you are selling your products. Networking is another aspect that Bakene takes seriously and this he says has helped him acquire new skills. One of the platforms he says has helped him refine this aspect is his participation in the top 100 mid-sized company survey by Daily Monitor and KPMG. First of all, it has, it has made me understand some uh, things in financial management. We've undergone some training, that's one. Two, also to look at the, at the statement and look at ratios and look at uh, uh, books of accounts. And it has encouraged me to get organized. Because we were already organized, yes. But now the need to be more organized is, is important. Over the years, respecting these values has helped this manufacturer see good dividends come his way. We have built capacity in the country in the field of plastics manufacturing. So some of the achievements I see we have, uh, we have, we have, we have got. Then also we have grown. Before we were operating on a floor of about 100 square meters. Now we have 500 square meters where we are now. And we have put up another building of another 600 square meters. So in terms of growth, it's both in machinery it's in tonnage of material we are consuming and also in the footprint, the area that we occupy. He also has many other personal achievements he attributes to this business. It is rewarding, financially it's rewarding. Yes, and uh, the good thing I like about this business is that when I go home, I tell my children how to make money and I give myself as an example so they can follow what I'm doing. They don't have to think about, oh, we have to get a job, no. If you can do what I'm doing or do it better, I would be very happy. And I would want people who are in schools, in secondary schools, I would encourage them actually to visit our installation so they can demystify, uh, demystify uh, production. But this is not to say that his journey has been so rosy all the way. One of the issues he had to put up with is a challenging business environment. We, we have several challenges. Uh, first of all, we would say access to credit is, first of all, in the first place, difficult. Because, in my view, it has been tailored for the, 
the kind of business that the banks have encountered for a long time, and that is trade. So the, our banks or financial institutions are used to traders. So they may not be used to other SMEs that are in value addition, which have got to procure machinery, ask for grace period, take long to install power, have high working capital requirements. So the, those are the challenges that face the SMEs. And you'll notice that most companies in Uganda that go into value addition, those who do steel, those who are doing plastics, their working capital requirements are quite big, quite large. So it becomes uh, difficult for young people to enter that line of, of, of business. And it's actually scaring because you find that the first that go there, the few that go there initially, suffer these challenges. So they discourage the others, say, oh, well, uh, this gentleman who started earlier has had some hurdles, so it's not a good place to go. He maintains that such hurdles should not deter upcoming entrepreneurs to join manufacturing. He, however, adds that this should be done with some good caution and thought. Follow the path I took. Start with your savings. If the savings are inadequate, maybe you can pull resources and form a team so that you can accumulate adequate resources. So in short, do not access credit initially. Start with your own. Build a track record. And then maybe you can borrow for working capital needs only. But when you borrow for capital, it is uh, very expensive and the, the environment is not very supportive. And who is the market? The market is Uganda and the hinterland, which hinterland is DRC and Southern Sudan. And these are countries that you know, there's M23s in the DRC, there is the war between the North and South, thus they don't have a lot of dollars in the economy. And those affect us. So those will affect your business if you are in Uganda. So in short, what I'm trying to say is that go very slow on credit. Ensure that when you borrow, do not be overgeared. Then you will not run into trouble. And that is the main problem that has caused many SMEs to die in infancy. Today, Bakini has made some good progress. However, he feels that there is more ground to be covered. You know, the, the detail with manufacturing is that if the demand is there, you can double tomorrow. Just import more machinery, I already have the trained staff, so it's easier for me to propel forward. Uh, what we are planning to do is, uh, in, the, in, the, in the immediate, in the next, within the next year, we're increasing on our production, uh, on the blown bottle production, because the demand of juices, organic products has grown. And uh, we, we already have the machinery to meet that demand. So that means that we are likely to double within the next year. Then we're also going to make uh, improved promotional products, sports bottles. Uh, we are importing printers to put digital prints. And so I can see us uh, more than doubling in the next one year. For us, we decided to team up and make briquettes using machines so that they can be sellable and create jobs and also get our earnings and profits.